So the question is, I mean, this is not a unique question at this point in American history. And I think that takes some of the pressure off this conversation. The question for the House is, do the Nazis get to march in Skokie or not? This is a cardinal case in constitutional law. We learned in the first semester of the first year of law school, and it's a debate then as it is today. But this is not was, a real town hall. This is a privately owned company. This, and in some cases, the other social media companies are publicly owned. Companies. But the whole, but as Becky, with all, with all due respect, the whole argument with all for due respect is the rudest thing you can say to somebody. Go ahead. I didn't, I didn't intend it that way, but I would say that I would say that the whole premise of this discussion is predicated on the fact that Twitter is the forum, is one of the main forums for open public discourse and debate today. It is one of, you know, one of the reasons I love this program is that people with diverse views can come together and exchange those views. We have lost those sacred spaces. Say what you will about Twitter. It is one of those few spaces on the internet today where people are still able to engage in dialogue outside of their echo chambers. The come back to your question, though. Pelosi is very dangerous. If you look at the Capitol, Washington Post put out a story yesterday about how the Capitol Police watched this break-in, or would have if anybody was monitoring the cameras. The stuff that was said about him it definitely leads to additional violence. And you can say this. I'm not saying this just about yeah. the Democrats. This is definitely a situation where Republicans have been put in this position. We're going to have Scalise on, who was shot. He's going to talk to us about these things. So, so this is, but Becky, the only thing I will tell you is this is not unique to this moment. We have been having this debate in this country since 1776, since 1789. This is the fundamental American debate. It is the bargain of free speech in our country. All right, free speech is not intended for the speech we love. It is intended for the speech that we do but not it love. Should not Without be it, it's not a free speech false. country. You can have your opinions, but saying that things are facts are dangerous. So here's here's my view on this. If you're going to take down false speech, the company bears the burden of proof to demonstrate that it was actually false. Because free speech is not a liberal arts luxury. So the pursuit of truth sure depends on it. The pursuit of truth it depends on it. In all situations, you can have an opinion, but there are certainly facts in certain cases. To be able to say whatever garbage you want until you are proven otherwise is not what you're So, talking. Becky, you'll take a look at the debates around closing schools. There were people who were censored on YouTube, on other social media channels, for making the arguments against school closures. Now we look back and say that, that were, those are probably policies that we regret. I believe we would have gotten to the right answers sooner if we had not censored those views. What Alex Jones says in these situations? I'm not a, I, I think we have to draw a distinction here. I think we do, too. I, I think we, Every this, time I lay out a yeah. valid argument, you change it and say it's a different line. Now, this is the yeah. distinction we need to draw. It's really important, is to condemn heinous speech. I think we need more condemnations of, for example, anti-Semitism. It is on the rise, particularly today in America. I think this is a problem. Jonathan and I, we, we've spoken off here. We share that view. We think it's a problem. I think There's the way anything you, that you don't like, that's what I that's what I'm shot. Absolutely. There, I disagree with a lot of the content that's listed on the Internet. I think we four of us probably share that in common where I differ from perhaps you on this is that I think the way we fight bad speech is through more speech, not through less speech. I think that is the American way. I think it is the way forward for Twitter on social media. Everything is amplified and spread and then people actually believe it. You have large populations of people who believe things that are absolutely false. We need to do the work as a body of citizens but to create a civic culture where we can actually have open debate based on facts. We can't blame a social media company for it. I see, which is it used to be that you could stand in Times Square right behind us mm -hmm. and you could shout whatever you wanted. But you could only get 30, 40, 50 people around you, right? Yep. Twitter's different. The amplification. All the, it's, it's, the, it's the piece that she's talking about. And so when, when you see these kind of heinous stories, uh, conspiracy theories about a Paul Pelosi situation that seems to lead to violence in other, in other situations, as a result of it, yep. the question is, do the, do the companies bear some responsibility for trying to rein that in? And I would argue they do. And to put it on, but to also put it on them to decide what's false is also a complicating factor. Well, but exactly. So, so if you, what I would say, if the company is going to take down something as false speech, the company bears the burden of proof to show that it was false. History teaches us, and by the way, not just history of the last hundred years, history of the last two to three years teaches us that many of our current beliefs well, will be modified in some way. Responsibility on the person who's speaking. Well, I would say put it, on, put it on the responsibility of the body politic to say that, you know what, we're going to debate these ideas in the open, may the best ideas win, may the best arguments win. And Andrew, I will just say, we're conflating a couple of different things here. I think the way you treat the misinformation point is different from the way you treat the category of hate right. speech. I think you can't have hate speech as a category because all opinions are allowed. For you. And yep. just, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who deny the election results of, of, of this last election, some of whom, by the way, look like they may win uh, next week. Do you think that, that there should be people correcting the record? 
I think there should be people correcting the record through free speech and open debate, not through silencing them and not through censorship. I mean, throughout our history, I'm proud to say we live in a country where you can go out and burn the flag and say, you know what, war on America. This is a country where part of burning the flag is what gives that the meaning is the fact that we live in a country where that is allowed. And if we lose that principle, we lose the very principle we're fighting for in the first place. So you got to draw this distinction between saying I disagree uh, vehemently, but still how, allow you the right to speak. How concerned are you? Again. How, how concerned are you with either democracy or the very idea that there are large parts of the population who believe things that are just factually untrue today? So I am deeply concerned about threats to democracy, but I think those threats to democracy, Andrew, are plural. And one of those threats to democracy is the centralized determination of truth. By the way, and here's a dimension we haven't talked about, where the government itself is now coordinating with Twitter, with Facebook, et cetera, to direct critics of the government to be silenced. This is something that I think is also a threat to democracy, where you have a government using private companies to censor Look, speech. So I think they're plural in nature. I think actually we agree on lots of things, but it's a matter of degrees, and I think it's very different. But, yeah, a longer conversation. Good discussion. Thank you. Appreciate it.